Ventura or Petra Bay and today I'm going to teach you how to make the stained glass kitty hat. Uh, I've made this pattern a couple years ago up and it gets lots of attention around winter. Uh, I have little hairs so my head gets cold and I like to wear it and people compliment me and ask me how to make it so now I'm making it on my YouTube channel. Uh, a couple things I want to mention before I get started is I do have someone else make my squares for me though I know how to make them because uh, I find different ways to support people such as abused children, women who need help, um, struggling single parents, um, and also this one is a project I'm doing to support uh, an, um, an older couple. They're in their late 70s and this helps them make money for food and stuff like that, um, cost of living. So they make my little squares for me, so if you just want to buy the hat at all to support me, it's at PetraBayArt.com. Um, or just Google Petra Bay and you'll be able to find them somewhere, I promise. I also do art and other things, but yeah, crochet is one of my favorite things. Um, if you want to make these and resell them yourself, the only thing I ask is that you credit me, please. Just because that will bring more attention to all the causes that I do. And the more you help me, I can help others. So yay! Um, but yeah, so, and if you already know how to do Granny Square, I'm going to put at the bottom of the beginning of the video... Um, where you can go in the video to just do binding and the edging so you won't have to um, watch the grading square or figure out where you need to be. So yeah, here's what the little kitty hat looks on. And I hope you enjoy the video. And if I talk too fast, I am so sorry. I really try to make these videos swift and so people can understand. So I'm going to slow it down for the pattern. I get that a lot, that I'm too fast. But enjoy! Alright, another thing I want to mention before telling you what time on the video you could skip to to get to binding and edging is how big each of these squares need to be. They need to be about almost 4 inches or they can be 4 inches. Just uh, no smaller than 3.5, no more than 4 inches um, a piece because when they piece together and then we bind it, you're going to need to know how many and how large. So I'm going to move this out of the way and this is a little piece we're going to do to learn how to do granny square. Um, I've used these colors because I think that they're different and you should be able to see what I'm doing. Um, the man and lady that make these little squares for me, like I'd said before, they use a size, um, five hook for this video so you can see it. Um, I'm going to use six and a half millimeter hook, K. Um, but yeah, they use five, but their tension is a lot looser than mine, so I would say that... If your tension is tighter, you probably need about a six. I'm just using a six and a half so you could see it better. But they use a five if your tension is looser and you're a beginner. Um, so I'm gonna start with the orange. And this is just a regular yarn. It's either Red Heart or another Super Saver. Um, and my hook, so yeah. I'm going to start with the slip stitch. If you don't know how to do that, I have videos on how to do that on my um, channel as well. Or you can do the magic circle is what this is about to be. Um, is going to be a circle that we're going to work into. So we're going to chain three. One, two, and chaining is just yarning over and pulling through. If you need help with anything I do in the video or any stitches, those are also in my channel as well. So once we have three double crochets, we're going to go into the top of the first one and we're going to yarn over and pull through both these. So that's going to create a little circle. You may have to mess with it to find the exact center, especially if you're a beginner. But yes, the middle is there, so we want to try to get into the middle now. Um, in this pattern, you're going to end up doing three to start, but to create one of these double crochets, people say you have to do chain three to make that one count as the first double crochet. So I'm going to yarn over and pull through, yarn over and pull through, yarn over and pull through one more time. That's called a chain stitch, and that's going to act as our first double crochet. And so now we're going to yarn over and do two double crochets into the middle. We yarn over, go into the very middle, yarn over, and we're going to pull that one out. 
should have three on your hook we're going to yarn over pull through two yarn over pull through two and if you need help that stitch was called a double crochet and that is also on my channel and super slow i think i made that one video in particularly slow so please watch it and then we're going to do one more double crochet straight through the middle and that's going to create our first it looks like little petals on the granny square and to create this space that um, will hold these ones on the next row we're going to chain two yarn over and pull through yarn over pull through and then we're going to double crochet three into the center of the circle one two three Once you have done those three, you could start see your um, granny square starting to build here. We're going to chain two, one, two, and then we're going to double crochet two, three into the middle. Double crochet one, double crochet two, and double crochet three. And then we chain two again, one, two and then we're going to work into this middle part we're going to do um, our last three double crochets and make sure this tail stays sticking out because in a minute we're going to pull that to make a tighter uh, circle in the middle so there's our one two and three double crochet And then we are going to pull this pretty tight. You don't have to close it up all the way, or you can. And we're going to chain two, one, two. And I'm going to slip stitch into the third double crochet, uh, the third chain stitch that I did at the beginning. We're going to loop that right into there and over. You're going to go under that third chain and go under your other chain for the end. And then what we're going to do is slip stitch into the next two. There's one and two. Try to get it focused. The camera doesn't want to focus it for you guys. Alright, we're going to slip stitch over because we want to make it inside of this little space over here. So we're going to slip stitch into the next two stitches. One, two, and then you slip stitch into the big circle. So you're going to slip stitch three total. And this is how I start my next round on a granny square. I usually keep it just like this. Just enough room to put your hook back in your work. I cut it pretty close to the end here. And then what I do is I pull that hoop out. So once you pull that hoop out, you should have a hoop. In your second slip stitch over I'm gonna get my next color which is blue and I'm gonna tie this in two knots as close to the end as I can get it that way I can get my hook back into this hoop I'm gonna slip stitch over and when you slip stitch over that should be blue now that may be hard for a beginner, so if you can't figure it out, just do it whichever way is comfortable because you may have to do a few of these before you learn. I had to probably do dozens. Alright, and now we're going to chain three. One, two, three, and we're going to double crochet two. One, two. And what I do with these tails is I try and crochet them um, while I'm double crocheting. I try to crochet them, incorporate them in the stitches just so they um, so I don't have to cut them off super close to where I tied them off because then they could unravel easy. That comes with learning too. So at the beginning, if you can't figure that out, you can just try it out later. But yeah, try and 
it was very confusing for me but yeah you just kind of make sure it stays in the middle of what you're working in and so now we are working on our next corner this is going to create a corner so in this corner we, we still need a, another space for the next corner we're gonna chain two one two right now you should have your chain three two double crochets and a chain two and then in the same hoop we're creating our corner now we're gonna double crochet three one two and three And that should leave us with a little corner and after we have our corner we're gonna need um, another space right here because we're gonna have a cluster later right in there we're gonna chain one should be enough for that one. and then we're gonna go right into this next big hoop and we're gonna double crochet three one two and three And we're gonna chain two. One, two, creating another corner. And then double crocheting three. One, two, three. And so this is creating our little corners. And now we need this middle piece to just be a chain one. And then we're gonna do the same thing into this big hoop, create another corner by chaining three double crochets one two three chaining two one two and then double crocheting three one two and three and then we're going to chain one after you've crocheted that chain we're gonna go and do one more corner piece into this last piece one two three and we're gonna chain two one two and we're gonna double crochet three one two three and then we're going to chain one and go into this top one two three this top chain on our hoop before we did our double crochet and we're going to do the slip stitch and when we do that we're going to slip stitch over three like we did before, one, two, three. Then I'm going to leave enough on my to look like you can fit your hook in there. Cut that piece pretty close. And then we're going to barely pull it out to where it's all the way out. But don't pull it too tight to take out the next one and we're going to add our yellow we're going to double knot it that's my one knot and two just enough to be able to put your hook through and so when we do this yay now we can chain three one two three and then we're gonna create the corner this is the start of a corner and this counts as your first double crochet so we're gonna double crochet two one two and then chain two one two and then double crochet three so it's just like we were doing before. Corner is the same. And then on this one, 
I'm not going to chain any because on this row we don't need to because we're not going to have anything else in between um, these going into these. So for this one, I'm just going to double crochet right into this next big space, three. There's one, two, and three. And then I'm going to double crochet three into the next, skipping where you would normally chain for a granny square. One, two, three, and then I'm going to chain two to make the corner. One, two, and double crochet three. And so it should look a lot like this right now. So then what we're going to do is go into this next space and double crochet three. One, two, three. And then we're going to go into the corner and double crochet three. One, two, three, then chain two, one, two, and then double crochet three, and then we're going to go into the middle, double crochet three, And then this is a corner. So three, chain two, three. One, two, three double crochets, two chains, three double crochets. And then we're going to do our last bit. We're going to double crochet three into that space. And then you're going to slip stitch at the top of your third chain stitch right here. And you don't even have to worry about uh, slip stitching over. I'm just going to pull about, a, about an inch, inch and a half hoop. I'm going to cut my string, and this is how I tie off my granny squares, is I put the little hoop through here and pull it. I do a double knot, and I just leave the tail for whenever I bind later. I bind it, uh, I put it against here and bind it into my work. So yeah, that's what the little squares are going to look like when they're matched up. And I guess, and then what we're going to do is need to make 12 of these all together, 6 for the front six for the back. This is good for using up scrap yarn, so feel free to use any colors work, and I'm going to be back to um, bind an edge. Alright, now that we have our 12 granny squares, um, you, you also don't have to do them random either. They can all look the same, because I was looking at this thinking how cute that would be as a hat with like a brown binding. But anyways, to keep us on track, what we're going to do is start to bind each squares together. Um, this part can be tricky just to pay it because you have to kind of pay attention to what you're doing. Uh, some people see a front to back to crochet. I do just because I've been crocheting so long. This is the back and the front just looks a little more finished um, looking to me. So if you want to do them a front to back kind of thing this is going to be your front you lay that down just like this and this is a front to me and this is a back so I'm going to lay the front on top of another front so they're going to be um, facing each other and then I'm going to go bind them together that way whenever you open it up like this later they're going to be front to front so just know that that will make sense in a minute so I'm going to do that and line up all 12 of these 
back the camera up just a little bit. And I'm going to do the same thing. That's laying topways. And then I'm going to put the front on top. So you see the bottom is under. And that's the top. And this is the top being flipped over. You're going to do this all the way across. So you should have six all the way across and 12 top to bottom. And then I'll get back to what we're doing. Or I'll just start now. I'm going to zoom the camera in here. What we're going to do next is I'm going to do sort of a just kind of looping it. There is a way to, well here, let's just start with here. We're going to get in the corner of this and we're going to grab your little yarn. And we're going to tie it off into a knot, leaving a little tail. Somewhere in the binding process, you can put, fill that in there to bind it in with it or later. I'm going to do mine later. And now what we're going to do is kind of measure all the way across those 12 that we've done. And then measure all the way across again. And that's going to give you enough string so you hopefully won't have to so you hopefully won't have to stop crocheting and you could just keep what you have on your hook so what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to get a smaller hook just for now since the hoops are kind of small and it's hard to get into it with a bigger hook um, it won't matter what size hook you use for this so what we're going to do is we're going to get into um, pretty much each space around we're going to hoop. So I'm going to get into these lined up spaces and I'm going to hoop one through that first double crochet. Pretty much just going to grab it and pull it through. And then you're going to flip this behind here and put your hook into the second one on each and you're going to pull it through. And then you're going to put your hook through these last three on here, grab it and pull it through. And then we're going to do this again on the first clusters over here. We're going to go through the top two and go through. And then we're going to go through the second one and pull it through. And then we're going to go through our third one. Hoop it and pull it through. And then we're going to go through the last three. Grab it. Go through each. Grab this. Go through. And you're going to put it through here. Grab it and pull it through. And there is a way for more advanced um, crocheters to slip stitch in each one all the way across. And if you do it that way, don't... Um, cut your yarn you can leave it on the ball because it'll stay um, you won't have to flip it over or anything so keep it on your ball and you'll, you'll use a lot more um, yarn than this way and then we're gonna go through the last one this third one Whoop. after we've done that I'm gonna grab it and go into this big space after I go into the big space I'm gonna grab my next set just like this and we're going to connect them by just hooping it over again. Just whichever way gets it going. It might be kind of floppy at first, but um, later when we um, open it up and go the other way, this way it'll um, bond a little tighter. So don't worry if it's kind of like this, but keep it as tight as you can. We're gonna do exactly what we did the first time and that's go through each two around. And you might grab extra yarn, but just try to bring through your string only. And you're going to go all the way across, just like we did before. And then I'm going to show you how to bind the next one. And then I'll leave you to go all the way across. And we're going to go through all six of them, which is really 12, because they're doubled. Sorry, that was our baby Sunny's. We have four kids, so the fact that you just hear one is amazing. Whoop, she just needs a after-sleep snack. 
All right, so we are almost to the end again. And there is no super duper right or wrong way to do this because before um, I've went through the middles, I've went through the whole post before um, trying to connect them. This is just the best way to help it lay flat the most, but there's no right or wrong way to bind them, really. Um, as long as you're putting enough in between, you shouldn't be able to tell any kind of weird difference. So we're going to go through this last big hoop and then find a way to come over here and hoop over as well. Not paying attention to how it might look. It might be floppy like this one. It's as long as you keep it sort of as close to this one as possible. And then you hoop over and you do the same thing all the way across um, with all the rest of these. And once you've done that, I will come back and we will learn how to open this up and go across. Once I've hooped through the last uh, big space here on the last granny square, what I like to do is put my hook in here, um, grab it, and then loop over and kind of slip stitch the string through and then give it a knot that way it is secure and then cut it off with a one to two inch tail and that should lead you with this kind of looks like a cool pendant or something Whee. awesome and so the next thing we're going to do is, this is the back side. Now you can kind of see why um, I chose to do it a certain way. It sort of looks the same, like I said, to other people. But this is front ways, and this is the back. So what we're going to do is we're still working on these um, binding the squares together all the way. What I like to do is start with the end and work my way down or up or whichever way you like to call it. And I'm going to sandwich these two just like this. This being the outside, that being what the, well actually this would be like the outside of the work whenever we're done. But this being the inside of the hat or the outside which we were just working in. So what I'm going to do is kind of squish it like a sandwich. And then get at least double of what the yarn across would be. And then I'm going to put my hoop into, put my yarn into these last two hoops, tie it in a knot twice, just like I did at the beginning. And we're going to do the same thing across. We're going to go to the first three hoops. And sometimes your granny squares are perfect. And when I said you have to bind three, sometimes there's no space for it, or you get it in a weird spot where you can't. And this is the where there's just a little flaw in the granny square itself. So I'm just going to skip over and do three. One, two, three. And then we're going to skip over again. We're going to do... This one's got a little goofy knot in it as well. But we're still going to see if we can find three to go through. One, two, and we have three. Awesome. And then when we do this, what I like to do is go through this hoop right here. And I like to keep it on my hook like this. And I'm going to slip stitch it like this. Just like you're tying it off, but not we're not going to tie it off. We're just going to do it like that. Take your hook, grab it here, take it on a hoop, and I'm going to do that one more time. And that to me gives it a nice uh, tied off look on each side because this could get very messy if there's no good binding. Since right here it's kind of loose where we kind of just went across, this kind of gives it uh, gives the hat a little bone to it so it's super tough. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to do the same thing. We're going to hoop and scoop it all the way across. And then how we tie it off is going to be how we tie it off um, either the middle right there or the very end. So 
where we go through the big middle, create a hoop, slip stitch, and tie it in a knot. All right, and then what we're going to do then is you can cut off yet another two, one to two inches, and then we're going to sandwich the next piece, and you're going to keep doing that all the way across. And then once you've done that, I will be back to show you more. All right, here we are. We are getting so close. Very exciting, very exciting. Um, this is what the back should look like. Ooh, and this is the front. And so what we're gonna do now to combine these into the hat we need is to fold it like this. And we are gonna, since it's all sandwiched like this, this is the inside where it's the front, the better looking part of the crochet I'd say. And this is what I would call the inside or the back. So what we're going to do is do the same thing across to bind this into what's pretty much the hat. And then we're going to do a couple things to put it all together. So I'm going to do that. And then we'll do the finishing touches. And I'm still doing this part with my smaller hook. Just so I can get through the hoops a little easier and faster for you guys. So we're going to double knot. And then you could slip stitch or hoop it all the way across. I'm going to still hoop it. This is the easier way for beginners. And it also saves some yarn too if you are using scrap yarn. And you want it to make sure it's all the same color. You want to make sure you have enough of it. This one doesn't use near as much as you would if you slip stitched. And so we're just going to go all the way across. And when we do go across, you are going to run into these guys. These two, what I usually do when I run into ones like this, is I put it in a double knot to secure them. And then, once we get over here, we're going to kind of incorporate it into what you're already doing. So you kind of hide it in a way. So this is the hoop over slip stitch kind of thing. And I just keep this kind of pushed down in between each one that I'm going to hoop it. That way you kind of hide it as you go if that makes any sense. And if it doesn't, you can leave little stringies. This hat's made to be fun. And all that tucking away and making it perfect when it doesn't always come out perfect anyways <laughs> is just learning. So then when we get to the end here, there's two things you could probably do. And there, and that's how we would normally tie it off, just like the other times. Now you have pretty much your hat, which is awesome, but now you're gonna have to bind the top all the way across. What I usually do is leave enough yarn to go across, but to show you step by step, um, I like the fact that I cut it short so I could show you sort of what it looks like before you get any more done on it. So you're pretty much just going to squeeze sandwich this together and go all the way across just like we did before. And these we're going to tie off just to extra secure this hat. Anytime I make hats, I like to make them no matter how fun, awesome, cool, sturdy is. My number one is making a very nice, well-made hat. So it'll kind of already be closed right there. So what you're going to do is go all the way across. And while you're doing it, you can kind of hide these in it or just leave it. This will be the inside anyways. But yeah, so we're going to go all the way across. Um, for this hat too, sometimes what I like to do is just go ahead and tie it off with just a different type. I mean with a more so I don't even have to take it off and I could just use what I got and not waste any yarn and scoop it and we're going to go all the way across till the end and then we're going to do the edging on the bottom so I'll be back for that all right now we are about right here we have the six and then what we're going to do after they're all bind is to turn it uh, the right way out just like that and you can see uh, let me back this up a little bit a little more of 
how the hat is like there we go turning out so yeah that's what we got so far and now we're gonna work in the bottom making the edging um, on the bottom of the hat um, it's very important now to use the same size hook that you use for the squares uh, themselves and if you are just wanting to move ahead of everyone else too because you know what you're doing crochet wise on the bottom I want to make sure you have 54 to about 56 double crochets on the bottom um, within all of these twice two rows of that should finish off your hat and if you're still kind of beginning and you kind of want to go along with me I'm gonna start that right now so what we're gonna do is get your hoop into one of the ends when it's the right way out and we're gonna make a knot twice and then create, grab that through and chain three. One, two, three. And then what I'm gonna do is double crochet into each of these three all the way across. So there's one, two, three, and then you're going to go over and go one, two, three. And then we're going to double crochet into the top of these all the way across again. One, two, and three. All right, and for this, if you think uh, this is pretty much a one size fits most, and when I say that, it pretty much does. Uh, the hat around is usually about 18 um, inches unstretched, and when you stretch it, you can stretch it up to 22 or more inches, right about 22 inches. So if your head's bigger than that, um, you can add more of these stitches as you go. This would be a good time to do that. But if you think your head's pretty normal in between 18 and 22 inches, I would, um, well, I guess if it's, if it's bigger, I would do a decreased double crochet is what they call it. It's when you yarn over, you go into the hoop, just like you would if you're doing a double crochet, and you're going to pull through two. And then you're going to hoop over, go in like you're doing a normal double crochet, grab this pull through two and then you should have three chains on your hook you pull over you yarn over and pull through all three of those and that creates just one extra um, in between each of these around but if you think your head's pretty normal what I'm gonna do is skip these all the way across and when you do skip this there's a tail right here what you're gonna do is I just kind of lay it on top of the one I'm gonna work in and I do a double crochet into that top one and try to catch it in the middle of my stitch and just kind of squish it down in there so now it's stuck and you don't have to worry about tying it off or cutting it too close and ruining your binding and I'm going to do it into this next one so then we're going to go three across on the double crochets all the way around and then we're going to do it again and then when you guys uh, who get to the end again where the two squares are meeting, you can do the decrease double crochet. And if you just want it uh, the normal size that I said, 18 to 22 inches around, you just would skip it all together. And I'm going to skip it and grab this tail and try to work it into this next double crochet. And you don't have to work it in at all if you don't want to. It'll just leave a little tail, which is A-OK -okay with me. And we're going to do that same thing all the way until we get to the end. And even on the side, same thing. You can either go through it or skip it all together, and I will meet you at the end. Um... But make sure you list, or do follow through to the end because we're going to end up counting these to make sure we have the right amount of numbers of them. Alright, so this was where it ended. 
and I'm going to slip stitch into this top space right here and when I count it all the way around um, counting this chain stitch as a double crochet as well I ended up getting 55 so that would be 27 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 3 all the way around and at this point it would be good to keep pulling this pretty long and then grabbing the hat and measuring it on your head to see how the fit is. Um, if you think that it is too um, small or big, you can take out some of these chains. Um, if you think it's just like a little bit too small or too big, it's good to take it out. And you can add, you know, two or three stitches right here. It's not going to make a big difference to your hat. Or if you want it super technical, you can take it out and figure it out with taking them from these. Or whichever but I think an increase or a decrease right here at the end could be quite easy to do so I'm gonna end up tying mine off here and then I'm gonna chain one two three and you're gonna go all the way into each stitch around with how many um, with how many you would want on your hat to complete it and then after that you have a complete hat and I'll just leave you there because you're just doing the same thing. You're going to double crochet all the way around anywhere from 54-ish to, I don't think anyone would have more than 60 around. And then you would slip stitch into the top of the chain three space and you have your little hat. And, uh, or you could stop at one row, but I think two row makes a nice bind. So I hope you enjoy the video. Make sure you like, subscribe, and comment if you have any questions. Thank you.